Okay, so this is hopefully Crossing Borders Part 2. And today I'm going to try, or rather tonight I'm going to try and cross from Iraq to Kuwait. And let's see how this goes. So the first step is I am taking a regular taxi to a garage called Sahad Sahad. I couldn't find it um, entering English on the Karim app. So the security guard at the hotel was um, kind enough to hail me a regular taxi and arrange it for me. And from there, I'm supposed to take a service taxi to the border town of Safwan. And I don't know how this is going to work because I read online that you, there's no way to change Iraqi dinars to Kuwaiti dinars at the border. And I don't have any US dollars and there was no way to get US dollars. So I'm not sure how this is going to work um, or if it's going to work at all. Worst comes to worst, I come back to Basra. <laughs> Hey, you know, you have to, you always have to have a plan B in these type of situations. Well, because it's Ramadan and exactly Iftar, I've, um, all the service taxis I think had finished for the day, so I'm taking a taxi just myself for 25000 with save. It's pretty dark, I think you can see. But, uh, yeah, it's still not bad, and we're going to the border of Safwan, and we'll see how the rest goes. I think it's about a 45 minute drive or something. no way to really capture these gas flares that you could see from the car with either a GoPro or an iPhone but they were really quite a sight almost dystopian yeah as the crow flies it's not a very long drive to the Kuwaiti border should be there in no time okay we are just looks like just a few minutes from the border crossing and I don't know how this money situation is going to work out but uh, it's kind of a fingers crossed type of deal we'll see but this the border town of Safwan actually at least this road is quite nice trees there's a lot of a lot of LED situation going on here definitely a lot nicer than the border in Al Anbar that I saw coming from Jordan, that's for sure. With how el I mean, elaborate this gate is. <laughs> so, here at the Safwan border crossing, it's far more laid back vibe than crossing from Mafraq Governate in Jordan to Al Anbar Governate in western Iraq two weeks ago. This is like super mellow. The weather's beautiful. Um, people are probably having their Ramadan iftar fast to work here or something, I'm guessing. There's no traffic. And they, one officer did a minimal inspection of my bags. Another guy looked at my passport, didn't even check the validity of the visa. And they just said, welcome to the border. And that was basically about it. Um, I had read that they try and press gang you into a taxi or something. But they didn't do that for me, I think, maybe because of the Iftar thing, I'm not sure. So I'm just walking, and I'm happy to do so, and I'm just very quietly using the GoPro. Um, I just want to show how this border crossing works for future travelers. Get all these logistics down. Well, that was one of the most laid-back border situations I've ever encountered. Uh, they just, I was, there was no line. I was the only person to walk in there. The man who was trying to stamp my passport couldn't figure out if I was coming or going. I had to tell him I'd come from Jordan and was going to Kuwait. He seemed kind of confused. He thought I was entering Iraq. Maybe he was being trained by his colleague or something. Um, the border, it looks like they're building some brand new, 
I don't know, duty free station or something. This the whole border is like a construction site. And so far it seems really mellow. So now I'm gonna proceed to the Kuwait side and see how that goes. That was relatively painless. I just showed my e-visa and the Kuwaitis told me to get on this yellow bus here that's just idling with nobody on it. Now I am on the mandatory border bus on the Kuwait side. Uh, it is possible to pay in Iraqi dinars. Um, it's 10,000 Iraqi dinars, even though you're technically in Kuwait, which I thought I had read was not possible. Um, and the nice Bangladeshi gentleman who is operating the bus, of which, I don't know if you can see, I'm the only passenger. <laughs> Being that it's Ramadan and everybody's uh, probably at home. Um, but yeah, I guess, I'm guessing he's probably driving me to a custom station. I'm not sure what exactly we're doing. But I'm just relieved that I was able to use the Iraqi dinars. Um, because this would be a hell of a long walk. Um, I did the e-visa, which was kind of tricky. Um, while well, I was at my hotel in Basra, it's for some reason really complicated to figure out the address. They want all the specific information about the address of the hotel to qualify for the e-visa, meaning a hotel in Kuwait City. And let's just say I had to use both Wikipedia to figure out the governate, and because Kuwait City's not really called Kuwait City, it's called Asima, apparently. Um, and then I had to figure, I had to go deep into Google Maps to figure out the block and the neighborhood and the street and all this, all this information for the hotel. So it actually took me like, took me like 40 minutes to figure out, um, how to get the e-visa, but it was definitely worth the effort because it made my passing through the Kuwait side of the border way, way smoother. And interestingly, Every Kuwaiti officer I've spoken to, which I think I spoke to about five or six, every one of them greeted me in English, despite me greeting them in Arabic. Um, I don't know if that has if that's owing to some sort of American influence here, or the legacy of the 1991 Gulf War, who knows. But, um, so now I'm on this bus, um, still on the yellow bus with the, the driver from Bangladesh, and... I don't know if this is the end of the road. I have no idea how far he's taking me or how I'm gonna actually get to Kuwait City. So what I did was I just had my e-visa out on my phone in my Yahoo mail and I just showed it to them. All right, guys. Well, the possibly last step was that the, the bus driver uh, ended up just basically passing me off to a taxi driver. This is Abu Sayyid. He is a fellow Bangladeshi. And hopefully he's taking me, we're going all the way to Kuwait City, and he's taking me all the way to the hotel. Um, I think this is quite expensive, but it's, um, it's 20 uh, Kuwaiti dinars, which is a fortune compared to what I've just been paying in Iraq, but also not surprising. And uh, yeah, this was about the last stage of things. One thing I just want to note, because I thought it was sort of funny, so alcohol is strictly forbidden in Kuwait. And when I was in Basra, I got like a little glass bottle of uh, Turkish seltzer water in like a corner store before I left and I didn't have a bottle opener to open it. And when I was on the Iraq side, um, one of the officers, he like, he banged the bottle on a table till the top popped off and he said that I had to drink it. Um, I had to drink it in their presence, <laughs> so I, I pounded this little bottle of uh, seltzer in front of the Iraqis because they didn't want to. They didn't want to be like, no, no, you can't bring this into Kuwait in case there's alcohol in it or something like that. Even though the, the bottle is clearly marked as a Turkish uh, soda, so <laughs> I just thought that was funny. But I think what differentiates this experience from that in the previous episode is there's been absolutely no hint of corruption whatsoever. Um, there was nothing, there was nothing funny with customs. The Kuwaiti officers were super polished and professional. Um, again, I think, I think having the e-visa might have made a, a good bit of a difference because the guys were just kind of relaxing, um, after having their, um, fast breaking meal. And I was the only foreigner to, 
to come through. There was no one else was making this journey tonight. But uh, to me, that's part, sometimes that's part of the fun of travel is just figuring this out on your own. And whoever's viewing this, um, you can follow my lead if you like and see how this is done. It's a mostly featureless drive from the border, uh, which is a, the border tunnel like Wade said is called Abdali. Um, and yeah, now we're actually starting to go a bit downhill towards Kuwait City, but it's been mostly a, I mean at night you can't really see much, but um, like off to this side, there's a, you can't see it from the GoPro, but there's a fence that's all rung in razor wire, God knows why, but uh, yeah, we're slowly but surely making our way to the capital, very uneventful. Okay, we are on the outskirts of Kuwait City, and my driver here has Google Maps on his phone, although he didn't realize, I think, that he had the whole uh, suite of Google on there, so I was able to, to put the hotel in. There was another app that he was going to use for taxi drivers called Kuwait Finder, but I couldn't figure out how to use it, and since he's driving, he couldn't be typing. So, this has turned into a weird, long travel evening. Although it's, it's overall going pretty well. I just have to figure out the payment situation at the end. I still have Iraqi dinars, which I think are essentially worthless here. We'll see how that works. And we are now in the sudden hyper-modernity of Kuwait City. And it is hard to reconcile that this is only like an hour and a half or so, or two hours south of Basra, Iraq. I mean, it feels like we're on a different planet. And these are geographically contiguous places. This is really, <laughs> this is really an intense difference. Well, this border crossing is one for the books in terms of the, the gap between political culture, physical infrastructure. This is just, this is incredible. <laughs> what a difference a border makes. Well, I've made it to the hotel, but now I am scurrying to find an ATM to give the driver a Kuwaiti dinars. He's such a sweet man. He speaks pretty much no English or no Arabic, just Bangla. And I know, I think, three words of Bangla. So the man at the hotel pointed me towards an ATM. I said, you know, I've just come from Iraq. There's no way I would have Kuwaiti dinars. It's not like there's an ATM at the border. There's no money changer or anything like that. It's not like how borders used to be. Well, I got my 20 Kuwaiti dinars and that was a huge pain in the ass to try and withdraw the money because I'm offline, I can't check what the exchange rate is and it just kept telling me insufficient funds over and over until I finally took out only the amount to pay the driver. I wanted to have some left over to use for, um, you know, incidentals. But I, apparently I only had exactly enough to pay the driver, which is, which is, you know, I'm glad I have that. But I guess I'll have to use a credit card for everything else here until some cash comes in. Well, here in the hotel in Kuwait City, this concludes the second installment of my Crossing border series. And I just want to do a little financial and logistical recap. Um just to kind of go over everything in sort of a, a word batch, if you will. So the taxi from my hotel in Basra to the South Garage with, with service taxis to Safwan at the border with Kuwait was 5,000 Iraqi dinars. And then the taxi from the garage to the Safwan border was 25,000 dinars. I'm not sure if I was overcharged on that, I mean, I had heard that the taxi should be 5,000 dinars with four people, which would make it, you know, one in the front, three in the back, that would make it 20,000 dinars. 
But again, you know, this guy was the only game in town, and he also had a really cool car and was kind of a tour guide, taking me, you know, through all this gas and oil infrastructure and everything on the way to Kuwait. So the visuals were cool, were cool with really intense gas flares and everything that were kind of hard to capture. Then the E Visa was three Kuwaiti dinars, which was about 10 US dollars or so. And that took about, that ended up taking about 40 minutes um, to get set up, but was well worth it. I highly recommend, recommend getting the um, Kuwaiti E Visa. And then the mandatory bus on the Kuwaiti side from passport control through, takes you, um, yeah, basically through the customs and it's it's pretty easy the way they do it. They actually do customs on the bus. So that was kind of cool. I wish I could have videoed that. Uh, so that was one Kuwaiti dinar, which of course I did not have because, and it was not possible to get one. There's no ATM or anything at the border or money changer. So that was 10,000 Iraqi dinars, which I was a little short of. I only had 9,500 and the bus driver, you know, batted an eye and, and took that. So that was cool. And then the last leg was the taxi to um, Kuwait City from where the bus dropped me off. The, the bus brought me straight to his taxi driving colleague. And that was 20 Kuwaiti dinars, which I think was about maybe like 65 US dollars or something. Um, and all told, I, I wasn't running a stopwatch and I did doze off during part of it on the Kuwait side because I had a long day, but I think the whole thing was like three, maybe three and a half hours max. And that, that's including the, you know, passport stamps and all the rest of it. Um, also, yeah. And I forgot, I want to mention upon leaving Iraq, there is no exit fee, uh, as there was in Jordan. So in Iraq, they stamp your, stamp your passport, um, uh, free of charge. And, um, that's about it. If you guys want to see more of this content, um, please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.